Hey everybody, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today it's going to be Zexus for the NES. Uh, this is a game I played a lot as a kid. Uh, one of my best friends introduced me to this game, and I never knew anybody else had owned it except for him, yet we still played the hell out of it, and as such it was a big part of my NES gaming childhood. So what I'm going to do is take you through this game in one sitting, uh, it's probably going to take us about an hour to complete, and um, I'm going to be taking a lot of shortcuts in the game. Not really shortcuts, so to say, but I'm going to be skipping a whole lot of content that you can normally try to explore or discover yourself. There's a lot of situations like this, as you can see in the uh, the computer control demo, where there's a lot of talking to people and stuff like that. Uh, it's got some exploration and adventure elements, but for the most part, they're kind of optional. Um, so, first and foremost, Zexus is a action game. Um, you know, second, uh, second fiddle to that is, uh, these talking to people and the kind of adventure elements and blah blah blah, uh, which again are optional. So this game does have a password save feature, uh, for those of you guys that want to try to tackle this game on your own, or you can just do what I'm doing and just play through the game straight through. Uh, so you're this character named Apollo, and Apollo has, uh, just this basic attack when you start the game. Uh, you can kill enemies and pick up these icons here, these E icons. That's basically money. Uh, I don't know if it stands for energy or something else, but in the top right-hand portion of the screen, it says E ball. Um, and then 53. That basically means I have, let's just say, $53. We'll just equate it to, uh, you know, nor normal American money. And, um... So yeah, this is actually one of the extra bonus rooms you can go to. You can try to bash this ghost with your head, he drops a treasure box. Uh, I think pretty much every treasure box drops you money. And in bonus rooms like that, I'll go ahead and do it again just to demonstrate, but bonus rooms like that, you can actually access them twice. And then after that, they're exhausted. When you go back, it's just an empty room. So if you see these, it's probably a good thing to play them out because for one, it doesn't really take that much time. I just got $40 for free, basically, um, from that second time. But if we go back in a third time, it's empty, just like this. And pretty much every little special room like this is like that in this game. Um, so, uh, Zexus is set up in a very interesting manner. Um, the game, or I should say the world you're at, always starts with a side-scrolling action platformer stage, just like this. Uh, the goal in each, each of these stages is to get what's called a Force Star. And by getting the Force Star, you're allowed into the palace at the end of the stage. I, actually, it might be called for, a Fortress or something like that. Um, and I'll explain how to get the four star shortly. Um, however, in pretty much all of these uh, introduction uh, action platformer segments, um, at, you know, at the beginning of each new world, um, you'll get power up upgrades, both attack upgrades and magic upgrades. So it's good to try to go through each of the doors to try to figure out where those power up upgrades are and the magic ability upgrades are. So I think this door right here is going to be, yes, it's going to be my my attack item, the 45 B ball, ball. I'm going to guess it means 45 degree bounce ball, because as you'll see, that's exactly what it does. It bounces at a 45 degree angle, and um, it's actually a very useful weapon in the game. Um, however, you'll notice the ball is actually kind of slow, and you can only fire out uh, two projectiles at a time. Um, now, just like the bonus room below, you can go to this bonus room twice, and the second time is actually an upgrade to your 45 B-Ball. So, to upgrade your weapons in this game, now you'll notice the uh, attack speed is much faster. So, whenever you get uh, attack weapons like that, you want to revisit that same room and just basically get a power-up for free. There are other ways to uh, upgrade the weapon um, to your second level. I should note it. I should note that weapons only upgrade once. So you get them, and then you can upgrade them once, and then they're maxed out. That's it. Um, and this is where four star is. Uh, to get four stars in this game, uh, you have to find these specialized like pillars or columns, and you hit them a few times, and these magic doors open up or whatever, and you go inside them, fight a little bit of a boss. You gotta hit him in the head, avoid his projectiles, otherwise you take damage. 
and bam, good, here's a four star, the dude gives you a four star. In the Japanese version of the game, he's apparently in, like this devil figure. He's got like horns or something like that. He's got basically a really creepy looking face. Whereas in um, this one, he looks more like a Zen Buddhist monk kind of thing. Um, so there were some uh, things that were taken out or adjusted between versions. So back to like I was saying, this level is going to take us a little bit longer because I'm trying to explain everything. Um, your weapons... Oops, you already have a four star. Yep, I, I know. Uh, basically, your, your weapons can be upgraded once. Um, and the way to upgrade them is to either buy the same weapon a second time, which costs money, or find a upgrade shop. There's this chick that'll allow you to upgrade your weapon for like $20 or something like that. Or, if you find the weapon um, in a level like this, the first level, you can just upgrade it for free by revisiting the, uh, the guy that gives you the weapon. And let's go back up here, that's... Oh, this is the chick that can uh, allow you to power up your weapon for $20, and... No, we'd just be throwing away money. It will let you buy it again, even though your weapon's already powered up, and you'll just waste $20, basically. Um, I'm not usually a stickler for the money in this game. Usually it just kind of builds up a lot, and I have a lot towards the end of the game, and I can just blow it on whatever I want, basically. Um, but yeah, so as I mentioned, there are also magic items you can get, and I'm not... I'm, I'm pretty sure, actually, we do get a magic item. So let's go through all these doors. Bet $20 and win a box with 100. This is also kind of a fun one to play. Uh, pretty much all these box boxes are going to at least give you your money back. So I, even though I got the worst one, 30, I still got 10, 10 more dollars then. Actually, there might be empty boxes, but I'm pretty sure you always get at least your money back. So let's play it. Winner, 100. So cool, we got, we got $225 now. But if we go back in a third time, again, all bonus rooms go away um, after the second visit. So let's go through this door. Um, the L, the L bar in the bottom right here next to me, uh, that's life, but my life is full, so it, it's not going to really do anything, so. By shooting the right stone carved with star five times, there's some English, uh, some bad translation, a hidden door will appear. And that basically tells you how do you, how you can find your fourth star. So the game isn't really all that cryptic. It does tell you, all these, you know, rooms tell you kind of what's going on, what you need to do, so. And this is, again, another little bit of a, a mini thing we don't really need to do anything with. Uh, you kill that guy, you'll get some money from whoever you save. Okay, cool, here, I'll give you an, a magic item, Footwing. So Footwing is kind of like this uh, pseudo-hover ability. And it lets you jump higher. Normally, to jump that high, you'd have to hold up and press A. You can do super jumps in this game by holding up and pressing A at any time. And obviously, if I have a foot wing, it pretty much lets me go almost the whole height of the screen, which is really cool. So, the game's got a lot of, like, special magic abilities like that, too. Let's get this upgraded a second time. See if it- I don't think upgrading the magic items does anything special. Yeah, it's still pretty much the same thing. Nothing special there. So... But yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, so we can, uh, with those out of the way, and the magic item was just completely unnecessary. I, I usually go without getting the, the magic item just because you guys know me. When I play these games, I like playing them relatively quickly. Uh, but since we have the four star, we're allowed inside the fortress. And um, the fortress itself is always divided into multiple sections as well. So you have this first side-scrolling platformer section. You've got various doors you can go through. Uh, weapon shops and so forth, people to talk to, bonus rooms and whatnot, but we're not really concerned about that. We've got these tubes here we want to go through, and when you see doors like this on the far right, that indicates that you're going to the second part of uh, the fortress, and it's a shoot 'em up section. So now we're Zexus turns into a side-scrolling shoot 'em up. It's not the most um, <clears throat> ingenious, you know, shoot 'em up section. It's relatively basic. It's not really um, crazy by any means. But you do have two forms of firepower. Um, you've got A, which drops these bombs. You've got B, which shoots your main shot. And then at the end of each section, you've got this split, and you need to pick the right um, door. Otherwise, you have to repeat the same section over again. So we're repeating 
the same section over again, actually, because we picked the wrong door. So, you gotta make a mental note to yourself, okay, I went through the bottom door, I had to repeat it, so now I have to go through the top door. Uh, so it's always good to keep that in mind, especially later on in the game, uh, because these segments actually get a little bit longer. Uh, there we go. Top door for the win. And so, like I mentioned, uh, each fortress is pretty much made up... It pretty much goes through the same pattern. Uh, except for the final fortress actually has multiple shoot 'em up sections. So it'll go like... Um, platformer, then shoot 'em up, then platformer, then shoot 'em up again. Nope, we picked the wrong door once more. Which is bad, because our health is actually getting low now, so we want to play it relatively safe. So to upgrade your, your speed and your, your main weapon here, you just basically pick up the power-up icons. They always sit on a platform. They're never, like, floating through the sky or anything like that, so you always need to watch out for those. And there we go. Now we're back on to the last part of the, of the, uh, the fortress. Um, so, again, later on in the game, like on the last palace, uh, you'll go through multiple shoot-em-up shoot -em sections on it. Uh, but in the case of this one, and most palaces in the game, or fortresses, you do one platforming section, then a shmup section, and then another platforming section, and then you'll fight the boss. And the boss is actually a hybrid of the shoot 'em up sections with platforming sections. Um, and we should be getting close to the boss. The boss is always in these, uh, these small doors. And that is not it. And actually, the boss might be up, might be up here. Might as well grab this money while I while it's there. Yeah. See, welcome Apollo. I appreciate your courage. Ride this flying saucer to the boss's room. I want the hell out of here. I don't. <laughs> and you can't actually walk out. Apparently, I, I don't think I've ever tried that before. <laughs> it's like, man, screw this shit. I'm out of here. Um. Well, no, seriously, uh, basically the boss- main boss fights in this game are, again, hybrids of the shoot 'em up sections with the platforming sections. So you're basically on this moving platform, and it, it controls just like a shoot 'em up does. You know, up goes up, down goes down, left goes right, or left goes left, not left goes right. Uh, you know exactly what I mean. And, um, it's actually very responsive, and, uh, the hitboxes are very reasonable as well, so... It actually gets a little chaotic towards the end of the game with some of those, like, the last boss and the second to final boss. Um, these shoot 'em up boss sections get a little bit tricky. Um, so, as you can tell, Ve uh, Zexus is full of variety, um, but it doesn't end there. We get another shoot 'em up section. Uh, so, Zexus is a game that is constantly bouncing back and forth. So, technically, at the start of any brand new area, uh, except for the very first one, you start off with the shoot 'em up section. Um, and fortunately, this shoot 'em up section doesn't require you to define a specific path or anything like that, so it's a little more bare bones in a good way. Doesn't have you using your head. And then at the end of these stages, you get yet another boss fight. Uh, Zexus is just chock full of bosses. Uh, it's got to be one of the most boss-filled NES games that's really ever been created. And that's one of the things I really like about Zexus. Um, the shoot 'em up action itself can get repetitive, um, but the bosses are good. Oh, okay, so apparently those in-between shoot 'em up sections are their own areas, basically. So it's just area 2-1, and then when you beat it, you're on to area 3-1. And that's basically it. So every area, area uh, bleh, every new area you go to, uh, you pretty much lose your power-ups, um, except for your health bar. Your health bar increases, it seems, uh, as you progress throughout the game. So we're basically looking for a guy who gives us our weapon, and the new weapon here is the Wave Ball. 
And it's very similar to, say, the Wave Beam in Metroid. And it can go through objects, coincidentally, just like the Wave Beam in Metroid. And now he pretty much just doubles our firepower. Just like that. So we fire, uh, two. Unfortunately, you can only shoot... You actually have to shoot less each time now. So, whereas before you could shoot him out twice, um, uh, now it only shoots out once per shot. But it is wider, at least. So here's the treasure box room. Might as well take these. And I think the magic item on this level is the mirror. Which I'm not... Well, actually, I probably should get the mirror just to show you guys what it's like. But of course, with stopping in these, these rooms, it's gonna... Uh, elongate this Let's Play much more than I initially planned. So let's just skip this guy. That's another bonus thing. You can kill him. You rescue some chick. You'll, you'll get some money from it. And this is just an information room. I don't really care about that. I'm just going through all these doors so I can try to get um, the next magic item. Don't need that because I'm already powered up. But we do need to hit this to see if it's uh, a force start. It's probably not because it hasn't come up yet. That's probably not it either. Okay. What would you like to buy? Let's see what magic items are available. Foot wing? Yeah, no foot wing. Okay, so it's not giving me the mirror. Which probably means it's not going to give it to you until you've actually been given it in the game itself. Let's get this health while we're at it. Okay, so no four-star in that one. And, man, you got another bonus room. We don't need that. Holding up an attack allows you to shoot up, as you can tell. But it's always your regular attack that you use when you shoot up. So, something to keep in mind. Good luck, take this! Free money! And you can do it again! Good luck, take this! Free money! And you can't do it again. Empty room. Again, two times, and that's it. Where's my four star? I always forget where the four star is on this level. It's It's gotta be towards the end. And this guy will re uh, refill your health, which we obviously don't need, because our health is maxed out right now. Uh, and I'll be honest with you guys, I actually don't really care for the, uh, the wave beam all that much. Uh, it's, it's a nice shot that goes all the way across the screen, but I find the 45 B ball to be more useful because you can fire it out twice, and it's pretty much just as powerful. Or at least it feels like it. And the key to beating this guy is just having a nice little rhythm there. Uh, back when we were kids, what we used to do is get up and get behind this guy's head. Although, when he's actually attacking you, it hurts you. His head hurts you. It takes off a lot of health. But we'd basically get behind him and shoot him from behind. So, I mean, that's a strategy you can go by if you're having problems with that dude. If you're having a hard time finding yourself finding a pattern. Oh, wow. So there is no magic item to get. Okay, interesting. I thought every single level had a magic item to get. Maybe we can buy the mirror in here. I'm pretty sure the mirror is the second one that you get. Yeah, you can see, like, this weapon just isn't as well equipped to deal with these guys as, like, the 45 B-Ball. So I think what's gonna happen is if I find a shop, I'm just gonna buy that weapon because I don't really don't care for the, uh, the wave beam at all. Um, it might be different for other people, especially if you get the mirror. I mean, if you get the mirror, basically what it does is it doubles your character, and you get, um... You basically have four shots going at once instead of just two like I have right now. Well, might as well play this game since we're here. Because it's basically free money. Look at that, I just <laughs> I'm rich! Alright, so what I really want is a shop, and this is not a shop. Screw
screw it, we'll go ahead and kill this guy anyway. Just to show you guys. Please accept $40, thank you. And again... Oh, no, can't do it twice on this one. I would really like the 45 B ball because well, at least there's some life. That's good. Ugh. Yeah, you've got to approach how you deal with those guys completely differently when you've got the wave ball. All right, so again, like I said, uh, it goes platforming section, shmup section, and then platforming section again. And so, every time you find the shoot 'em up section, you know you're at least, eh, a third of the way through the castle. And you don't really have to kill any of these enemies either, it's just kind of optional. <laughs> like a lot of things in this game, it's just, it's optional, you know? You kind of do it to make your life a little bit easier. Uh, or if you're playing for score, you know, that's... But if you're not playing for score, you can just kind of skip the enemies if you want to. I have a tendency of just attacking the enemies. Oops, and so the top door is the wrong door. Alright, so we're done with that, now we can try to bolt our way to the boss fight. But again, I kind of want to get the 45 B-Ball, I'm just going to go ahead and pay up for it, I don't really care at this point. So there's always a shop in these palaces. I could do hand beam as well, I mean that's still relatively useful. You can upgrade your stock hand beam to where it basically goes all the way across the screen. Uh, but I'm gonna go with the 45 B-Ball, just because... Uh, it shoots pretty quickly, I can bounce it off of walls, it's just, it's easy to ricochet it into enemies. See, it's just, uh, I like it a lot more than the wave beam. To see what magic items we have. Yes, yeah, still just the foot wings. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, the foot wing will definitely help people that are having problems with the platforming segments or sections. Um, but I don't usually use the the, the foot wing. Sorry. And actually, I don't really use many of the power ups in this game. A lot of times, I just upgrade my weapon and just go to town, and that's it. You know, you're pretty uh, pretty versatile versatile as is. You know, you've got regular jumps, you got super jumps. Um, Ooh, that was close. You do have to be careful about, uh, those pits, though. Those will kill you instantly. And, um... Alright, we'll go ahead and just... I think this is the boss, yeah. We'll go ahead and just end this. Not a big deal. Gotta get back on track, Austin. No exploration. <laughs> See, this is why I like the 45 B ball. I can just use it so much faster than I can, like the wave beam. Now, granted, a lot of these bosses are kind of like designed around the weapons you get. It's so, like this guy is kind of designed around the wave beam, which is a forward facing weapon. You know, it just goes straight ahead. And the boss's pattern is designed for you to sort of be straight ahead in front of the boss. Whereas. The 45 B ball makes it a little bit trickier, um, but you can attack faster, and I, I prefer that. So, I'd take the risky route in that case. If you're playing the game for the first time, trying to beat the game, you'll probably end up using the wave beam. So, Sexus has five main worlds. Um, Basically, you need to get five four stars, which allows you into the final palace in the game. And then the final palace has multiple shoot 'em up sections. It's got its own boss. Um, and then uh, you actually go to another sort of, not alternate, but another extra final boss afterwards, which is a completely different gameplay style than anything else in the game. 
And that boss fight doesn't last very long, it's more or less just a novelty. But it's still yet another example of how this game really likes to mix up the, uh, the gameplay styles. Fortunately, it didn't go any farther than that. It's all action through and through. There's no... <laughs> point-and-click adventure segments or on-rails shooter segments or anything like that. Uh, I think the the dose of variety it does have is a pretty healthy dose, and it's it's a good balance, I think. And that's why Zexus is a, it's a pretty neat game. It's definitely a game I, I definitely recommend trying out on the NES. So yet another boss down. And this is the one... Oh, this is the crystal place. Okay. And this is where we get the moon ball, which is an awesome weapon in the game. This is probably my favorite weapon in the game. So again, upgraded twice for free. Oh look, here's our four, our four star. And I think this is actually where we get the mirror as well. So actually, if you want, I can demonstrate... Oh, wow. I killed him by complete accident. The, uh, the balls floating around me killed him pretty much automatically. That was pretty funny. I wasn't expecting that. But uh, if you look at my health, he took off like at least a third of my health. I had already taken a little bit of damage before going in there, but... Just goes to show that if you take the strategy where you jump over the dude's head and try to hit him from behind, it's riskier. So we're not going to worry about the whole money thing, I don't... Yeah, we're, whatever. Don't really care that much. Uh, we got plenty of money. We're... We're pretty rich right now, actually, all things considered. What would you like to buy? Let's see if the magic item's appeared yet. Foot wing. Still hasn't appeared yet. Which means we have to be given it... I'm pretty sure we have to be given it, but I'm also pretty sure it's here. Here we go. Yeah. I'll give you a magic item. Mirror. So bam. We've got, uh, twice the firepower now. Also, twice the slowdown, but that's okay. You know what this level reminds me of? It's always reminded me of the Alex Kidd games, because they use, uh, platforms that are just made up of balls in a lot of cases. Uh, especially the first Alex Kidd on the Master System, and then the first one, um... Or the, the pseudo-successor to it on the, um, the Genesis. Um... Alex Kidd in the Enchanted Castle, I think it was. Um, speaking of Alex Kidd, Miracle World was always my favorite one. Maybe it's because of that graphical style. It's just neat, I think. A lot of NES games had a lot of, like, square objects, you know. It, it was a tile-based system. So it was natural. I mean, say with the Master System, but... And on the Master System, you had some games like Alex Kidd take those tiles and just give you a bunch of balls on the screen, and it was just... It was just a different aesthetic, you know? And it looks cool. And this is not where we want to go, because there's no door. There's no, like, forward-facing door. So what's really cool about the Moon Ball is... You can hold down and attack, and it basically causes this, like... These, these beams to, uh... To happen, and then when you let go, you shoot them across the screen. So that's a really great way to do uh, attacks with the moon ball. So back to our shoot 'em up section. Wrong one, so we need to go into the bottom one next time. This is one of my least favorite aspects about this game, is when I get to these sections, like, my... Um... Excitement for the game just kind of, like, drops. I'm just like, ugh. Trial and error, trial and error. Uh, so definitely not my favorite part of the game. And I always hope that I get the, uh, the pathways correctly the first time. Which... Many times is not the case. And, uh, you know, they, they very well might be in the same spot every single time. But I don't play the game enough these days to where I... Um... 
to where I have those memorized. Uh, okay, good. Back to business. So as you can see, we lost our mirror ability, which I'm not too terribly worried about. Just simply because, uh... I mean, it's useful, but it does cause a lot of slowdown. Um... And also, a lot of the guys, there aren't really that many layered enemies, like guys that are above you. Um, if they are, you can usually just kind of take them out from a distance, like this guy. Just jump from a distance and, and do it. And I think... Oh, that is the boss, okay. Of course, they make you go through the hardest jumping series in the game so far to get to it. That's reasonable. It's the NES, guys. What, what would you expect? So... Yeah, you can probably see why I like the Moonbeam. Like, it's just a forward-facing shot, and... But it's a bunch of shots at once, you know? So you can just kind of sit and just mash lightly. You don't have to mash that hard with the Moonbeam. You'll still get a nice little stream of bullets going. And bam, just like that. Although, not the next boss, but the boss after, I'm probably gonna use the laser, which we get as a weapon. We don't get it on this level. I think there's actually only one more weapon we do get, now that I think about it. I think we only get a, uh, magic item here. And in uh, many of these shoot 'em up sections, it is kind of hard to not take damage. But here we are, boss fights. And this guy's not too bad because he literally just stays in the same position the whole fight. Whereas some guys will have patterns like this, but then they'll get one step closer, then one step closer, and then... Before you know it, they're right in front of you and you're like, uh, how am I supposed to dodge this now? <laughs> Yeah, this place, uh, I don't think actually gives you a weapon. If you get a weapon, like, yeah. We're going every door, just in case. And skip the ones like that. Uh, you can, you can go in the water in this level, which is cool. Yeah, I think he just gives me a magic item, and that's it. And we get the Typhoon, which is neat, but it's just not something I really go for. If it was, like, a uh, permanent invulnerability, or at least until you went into a, a room or something, then that would be a different story. I think it would be pretty cool, but... It lasts for nine seconds. I'm like, eh, nine seconds, whatever. <laughs> so we got 70 for that for free. And the only other issue with the Typhoon, you're like, well, I can't... try to, uh, access four stars now. So that's not one. You know, just for fun, I'm going to uh, just upgrade my hand beam. That's it. To show you guys. See, the hand beam goes all the way across the screen now. See, this is the uh, behind the head strategy. We lost a good bit of health trying to do it, but it's something you can do if, uh, if you're not very good at the game. If you're having problems like we did as kids, then uh, it is something you can keep in mind when you play this game. Zexus, uh, honestly, is not an overly difficult game. It's not, 
it, it doesn't live up to, like, the term NES difficult. Like, it's... It'll probably give you a challenge if you've never played it before. Um, but it's not like a Castlevania or Ninja Gaiden kind of challenge. Really, anybody that plays the game, I think, um, should be able to get through it. It's got a password save system, so you can always just, you know, go back to, you know, where you left off if you get a game over or something like that. So it's, it's pretty forgiving. I'm gonna go ahead and take the health refill. I've got a lot of money to burn, so it's like, why not? Look, another item shop. What the hell? Really? <laughs> Actually, you know, in this case, I think I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade my weapons. I'm like, eh. Actually, no, screw it. We'll just keep the hand beam. I promised the hand beam, so I shall give you guys the hand beam. Oh, the health is gone! What? That's why I went up there. Oh, we died. That's our first death. We have five lives. I don't even know how you get extra lives in this game. Maybe you get extra lives from points or something like that, but I, I really don't know. Well, yes, I will power up my weapon. $40? That's a ripoff. No, I'm just kidding. It is like double what it was earlier on in the game. <laughs> so something to be noted, in rooms like this, if you see like life, you can usually exit the room and come back and it will be there again. So if you're low on health, you can just do these rooms over and over again. That is definitely one of the cool things about uh, these palace stages. So back to yet another shoot 'em up section. Is this the right one? It's the right one. Nice. Let's try the bottom one. Ah. Oh. This is like taking the uh, multiple choice exam when you don't know the answers and you just hope the one that you pick is the right one. <laughs> Ah, uh, yet another one. See, in earlier ones, you'd only have uh, two stages to go through, but now we've got three shoot 'em up stages back to back, which elongates it, which just makes it feel tired at this point, a tired concept. And when you get the wrong door like that, you're just like, man, screw you, game. <laughs> Screw you. Especially when you're mashing the fire button as quickly as I am. Yeah, I should just stop firing. <laughs> Give my thumb a rest.
I actually don't think that's the boss up there, but we'll go ahead and try it just in case. Yeah, I didn't think so. And this might... Yep, there it is. Having the moon ball probably would have been a better idea, but... I don't ever go through a palace like this with the hand beam. I just thought it would be kind of fun to do on the Let's Play. So it basically is an option, or if you die and you don't have much money and you can't upgrade to something else, you might have enough money to at least power up your hand beam, so... It's kind of to show you what happens in those situations as well. All right, get another shoot 'em up section. So we're actually nearing the end of the game. We're not quite there yet, but we are getting a, a little bit closer. So we basically need to get one more four star in this next area. Got to go through another palace, fight another boss, and then we basically have to do the whole thing over one more time. Minus the uh, four star, because we will have already had all of them. And then we'll get to the, the largest palace in the game. So I'd say we probably have another 15, 15 minutes or so. Maybe 20 minutes. Maybe less, actually. It might be less than that. I'm probably overestimating. So a trick to beat him faster is to use both your bombs and your shot at the same time. Although it's a little bit riskier. Eight lives, man. I earned a bunch of extra lives in that last level. So this is where we get our laser weapon. And I'm not going to worry about powering up right now. I think the laser comes right here. Yep. And again, just like usual, power it up a second time for free. And this is actually a really good weapon, too. It's very powerful. It, it shoots a ton of shots out. It's mainly powerful because it shoots a ton of shots out, not necessarily because it is inherently powerful. But, uh... Might as well take some free money in case I start dying a lot, which is a possibility. So we got $110 there for free, basically. Now you have to be careful about this part, because if you fall down the hole, you do die. Or if you fall into the lava, you do die. Okay, free money. I, I'm... I oblige. <laughs> so again, always do it twice. And we don't need anything here. Although some health would be nice. Although that dude doesn't give you health. But this dude does, and we might as well take it, because we've earned a lot of money. 
a lot of free money, actually. <laughs> Most of the money I've been earning is free money, actually. That's what's kind of funny about this game. They're like, here's his currency system. We'll just give you pretty much, you know, most of what you need, like any good social service. <laughs> Screw going out and earning it yourself. So I did that a little bit differently than I normally would. But I kind of wanted to see how fast I could take it out with just the, uh, the laser. Alright, so this boss, I prefer the laser out of any weapon in the game because it's such a rapid-fire weapon, and I think you guys will see what I mean once we get to the boss. Uh, to me, the boss of this place is probably the hardest boss in the game. Uh, it always gave me a lot of trouble back in the day. And now I can beat it without too much problem because, you know, I've had a lot of shoot 'em up experience since playing this game as a kid. And that was the wrong one. Go figure. Or was it the right one? I don't remember... Might be... No, it was the wrong one. <laughs> Alright, so we went the top way, so we'll go the bottom way this time. Usually going to a place that has a different background is a good good sign that you, uh, you pick the right path. And if you go to a place that has the same background, chances are you went the wrong way. It's not to say they don't reuse uh, the same backgrounds, but usually, from what I can tell, they don't use they don't reuse them back to back. So good, we got that one right. <laughs> we passed the exam with flying colors. So this is a boss where I'll probably want to try to have full health when I get to him. And I don't think this is the boss up here. If it is, that would be great. Yeah, it's not. I didn't think so. You know, I'm gonna go ahead... No, I'm not going to. Never mind. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna buy... the mirror. And then I was like, nah, you know, who cares. <laughs> Although for a lot of players, having something like the foot wing would probably be good right about here. But if you know how to deal with this section, you don't you don't need it. But for I think a lot more casual players that haven't played this game much, uh, having the foot wing is going to be a, a nice little crutch. And what I really recommend doing is taking your time when you fall off platforms, because it's a little like Castlevania, where the second you're off of it, you fall straight down, and it's very easy to say go from this platform into the endless pit down below. So, be careful about that. I don't think this is the boss. I didn't think so. This is a late palace in the game, so... You know, it's gonna take a little bit longer to get through these. And I'm gonna wager that it's probably down below, not up top. Usually, they make you do slightly more difficult things to get to the boss on these, uh, these stages. Yep. Alright, so we don't have full health, but we should be fine. If we don't, we've got like a bazillion lives to burn through. I like to stay towards the bottom of the screen. And just dodge his bullets. No, it basically just requires really quick reflexes. And he does a lot of damage, too, so... You can only take so many hits. I 
All right, so now we're officially off to the final stage. Stage is we got this last shoot 'em up level, and then the final platforming segments, and then we're pretty much done with the game, guys. So I'd wager probably another ten minutes from here. So maybe my original 20 minute uh, prediction was about right. I don't know, because I haven't been timing. <laughs> you know, this level reminds me of uh, some levels in Godzilla for the NES, which is the moon structure and some of the objects you have to destroy, some of the little flying ships. Godzilla is an NES game I've played a lot of, but I don't think it's one I'm going to let's play anytime soon, just because uh, it's a pretty long game if you want to do it from start to finish. And that's a little... It's a little tough to go through that one without stopping. Tough in that it just gets kind of boring after a while. And kind of boring for me usually means painful to play after after a certain point. It's not necessarily bad, it's just I don't have the patience to sit through two hours of monotonous action like I used to as a kid. Zexus gets to that point occasionally as well, because it's like... It's a lot of the same patterns over and over. I mean, the bosses are great, the platforming segments I think are cool, but the palaces get old, they get repetitive, and then the shoot 'em up sections outside of the boss fights get really repetitive as well. Alright, so we don't need the, uh, any four stars now. We have all five. All we need to do is just get powered up, get into this place we need to go to. And I'm not gonna really worry about free money now, because I've got tons of it already. I want my power-ups, man. I'll go ahead and take this power-up. Just for now. Actually, I won't. Eh, it's like the third time I've done that. There we go. What would you like to buy? An attack item, please. Would you like the hand beam? 45 B-ball, wave ball, or moon ball? I will take the moon ball, thank you. And actually, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go backwards. And I'm gonna upgrade it for less than the cost to buy another one. <laughs> really convenient. You can, you can milk the system, man. So that saved us uh, 30 bucks. I know, even in video game land, I'm still cheap. <laughs> I'm still a cheap bastard. But it's okay. Sometimes that's a, a necessary trait to have in games that are difficult. Unfortunately, this game's not too bad, difficulty-wise. Although I do have the bias of having played it a lot over the course of my life. This is a... Not just one I played as a kid, but it's one I always revisited over the years, so... You know, it's one I've always stayed relatively familiar with, even in adulthood, so... So we're pretty much just gonna try to skip all this stuff, because we don't really need any of it. And we can just go straight into the palace. So there is a gimmick here on this palace, but we're not gonna have to worry about it yet. It's in the last section of the palace. And basically what it is, is we have to destroy like a certain amount of like these android creatures. Android-like creatures. Uh, which will therefore unlock the, uh, the door to the final boss. It'll make the door appear, I should say. Doesn't necessarily unlock it, it just... It's nowhere to be found until you destroy these android things. All right, good. We got our first door. You always look, want to look out for these doors. Um, these are the doors you need to get to your shoot 'em up sections, and only by getting to the shoot 'em up sections we progress through the castle or the palace or the fortress or whatever they call them. I don't have the manual in front of me. Um, so again, this palace has uh, multiple shoot 'em up sections. So, it is easily the longest level in the whole game. Especially if you pick the wrong path like I just did. So we need to take the top path.
You can see those are just really repetitive enemy designs. They're not really all that engaging from a gameplay perspective. So it does start to get old after a while. They use a lot of the same uh, enemy types and objects. They might just like palette swap them or they'll do a... Uh, in the case of like these big uh, yellowish things, they just redraw them as into different objects, but they basically do the exact same thing as like the big red spiked objects did in the uh, previous level. Man, another wrong choice. Ah. So we need to take the top path. Damn, done with the first one. And what have we got up here? Is this a shop? It's probably a shop. Ooh, it's life. I like that even more, because it's free, and it's infinitely respawning. Damn, I could do it again if I wanted to. Let's do it again. Oh yeah. <laughs> full health. Let me do it again, even though we already have full health, but we're not going to. <laughs> Oh look, our next shoot 'em up section. Good stuff. This might be the only other shoot 'em up section in this final palace, so if it is, that's good. Bottom way. Bottom way worked. Let's try the bottom way again. Oh, failure. So we know it's going to be the top way now. The great thing about the shoot 'em up sections on this these levels is that you uh you can't go back once you've completed them. So you know that you're you know you're making progress in the castle. It's not like Zelda 2 or something like that where you know the palaces are just wide completely open-ended uh, They're not set up in that action-adventure kind of you know manner where you can get lost and whatnot Like I can get in the door, but I can't go back through it. So that's nice And I think this is our last uh, Segment now. Yeah, I don't think we have any more shoot 'em up sections um, so what we need to do is find the android dudes, unless I'm wrong and there is... No, this is it. Yeah. Now these guys will kill you really, really quickly. But the moonbeam is pretty awesome for taking them out. Uh, you can tell you got the androids coming up by these, uh, platform configurations. You basically have these little jumps, and then a solid wall, vertical wall which reveals the android that you have to take out. I'm just gonna call it an android. I have no idea what it's actually called. Again, no manual in front of me or anything like that. But um, it looks like an android, so I'm gonna call it an android. So we took out one, we need to take out two more, and then the, uh, the boss room appears. I believe the boss room appears down here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go down here anyway, just in case. Yeah, it appears here. I can tell by these, uh... These, uh, vertical platform sections. The big heads shooting out the projectiles. That's the giveaway for me. So again, platform configuration. You know there's gonna be an android here coming up. 
I prefer to jump over and just wait for them to come back, kind of like this. Because if they touch you, uh, physically, that's where you take most of your damage. Alright, so I think that's actually all of them. So we should be able to go to the uh, the final boss now if we really want to. I want to go through this door and see if it's a... Yeah, I thought it was going to be some health. Alright, so let's go back down. And there it is. Our magic door has appeared. We can beat the game, or get close to it, because we do have one more boss after this. So, ideally, it probably would have been best to get the laser weapon, just because it would have made life a little bit easier, less button mashing. But still, whatever. So this guy actually has two forms. Uh, actually, no, technically three. You have to destroy these arms, and then destroy his main body, and then destroy his floating head that's left over. So I actually think this guy is easier than the prior boss, because you don't have to do as much fast reacting. Although this part right here, you do have to watch out for. The flicker can get in the way, and in a way you won't be able to see a lot of the uh, projectiles that he's firing out. And that's it! Almost. So we basically get this ship and we go to... It's kind of hard to explain, you'll see in just a moment. Uh, but we basically have to like drop these bombs into the core of the fortress... ...while avoiding the other projectiles that come out. They will destroy you pretty quickly, actually, so... Alright, you can just kind of go through like this. Ooh, that was actually a lot of health they took off. So yet another way to mix up the gameplay, which is pretty cool for the end of the game. It's not terribly difficult or anything like that. I just remember being a kid, playing this with my best friend at the time. Like, when we saw this, we were just like... Minds blown, and um, I was just a cool way to end the game. So Apollo successfully destroyed Garuza's fortress and returned to Zexus Kingdom with Queen Maria Star. Later, Apollo married Queen Maria Star and became the king of Zexus. That's a uh, typical cheesy story, whatever. But <laughs> uh, we never even paid attention to that stuff as kids. But reading through the stories as adults, it's just actually kind of funny. <laughs> if this was like a movie critic like review show they'd be like we're that was fast <laughs> that escalated quickly but um there you have it guys that's zexus these are uh some secret codes you can enter um and they're basically just boss rushes and then when you're done with the boss rush it just throws you back into the, the regular game um so i think the top one is the standard boss rush for the palaces or, and the second one is the one just for the shoot 'em up sections. Or it could be the, the other way around, I don't remember. Um, but it's pretty neat. It's a, a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of an extra you can go through and try to play when you're done. But, uh, yeah. 
that's Zexus for you guys. Uh, really fun game. Um, kind of a classic NES game for me. Not so much for other people because it's it's kind of unknown in a way. It's kind of a hidden gem. Um, I think people have been discovering it over the last couple of years thanks to YouTube and classic gaming on YouTube becoming a popular thing. But uh, it's still a relatively um, un unsung classic um, where it's a really cool game that just not many people have played with played because it's one that not a whole lot of people I think played back in the day when it was new. Um, but yeah, I like it a lot. I recommend giving it a try if you've never played it before. And that's the whole game in a nutshell. Um, not very difficult. I think it's I think it's gonna give newcomers a, a slight challenge, but for people that are pretty experienced with the NES, you're just gonna blow right through this game with really out too much problem. Um, that's one of the reasons why also I think it's pretty good, is that if it was way too difficult, uh, it would be one of those games that probably nobody would want to play, because it can get repetitive at points, or at parts. But, uh, yeah, there you have it guys, Zexus for the NES. Uh, thanks for watching, if you're new to my channel, uh, please consider subscribing. I've got a lot more Let's Plays on my channel like this, as well as other types of content for you to check out. And for everybody else that already is subbed, thanks as usual. I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed the, the video, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. Take it easy.